What do you think of when you hear about the Wild West? Perhaps things like men with facial hair, big boots and hats riding horses? Or maybe even things like bar fights, old saloons, and two wooden doors swinging open? Yes, these are all things that we picture because those were the pretty basic parts of the Old West. However, there is much more that made the Wild West a pretty wild place. And that's where the soil doves come into the picture. Who were the soil doves? They were the prostitutes of the 19th century Wild West. The Soil Doves was not the only name these ladies went by. There were several other nicknames people used to refer to these women, such as Sport and Women, Soil Doves or Prairie Doves, Frail Sisters, Public Women, Ladies of Ill Fame, Ladies of Easy Virtue, Nymphs du Prairie, Women of the Rehab, Women of Evil Name and Evil Fame, Demimond, Frail Sisters, Scarlet Ladies, Girls or Women of the Night, Fancy Ladies, Caliso Queens, Horizontal Experts, Fallen Women, Purveyors of Pleasure, Red Light Ladies, Fairies of the Half World, or Brides of the Multitude. There were several other nicknames, however naming them would take hours. You could most commonly find a multitude of these ladies around the town's local bordellos, which were the bars. They would greet men at the door with a friendly hello, followed by the question if they had been there before or if it was their first time. Most of the men that would come there were lonely travelers that were tired from being on the road all day. They would come in not only to have a nice beer, but to find themselves a companion for the evening. Prices for the ladies depended widely on factors such as race, location, ethnic background, age, and of course, looks. On San Francisco's Barbary Coast, prices went anywhere from 25 cents for a Mexican to $1 for an American. The normal price for black, Chinese, or Japanese girls was 50 cents, while the French sold their favors for 75 cents. Red-haired women were the most expensive of all. It was a well-known myth in San Francisco that a woman with auburn traces was exceedingly amorous and that a red-haired Jewess was the most passionate of all. The most common towns you could find the soil doves in was that of mining towns, logging camps, large cities, and cow towns. However, they were mostly all over the west, also including places like cattle shipping centers and end of track towns. They also could be found at army settlements like Hayes and Leavenworth, Kansas, or any frontier boomtown for that matter. The soil doves commonly changed their name when they went into practice to avoid shaming their family. Their names were pretty interesting to hear. Some of them were names such as Cuttin' Lil' Slasher, Hambone Jane, Titbit, The Great Easton, Sweet Annie, Black Pearl, Wicked Alice, Smooth Boar, Molly Badam, Little Gold Dollar, Fatty McDuff, Lady Jane Grey, Cottontail, The Roaring Gimlet, The Little Lost Chicken, Irish Molly, Big Nose Kate, Rose of Cimarron, and Diamond Tooth Lil. Now to answer the question I'm sure you all have been asking. What possessed these young ladies to resort to something as frowned upon as prostitution? Well, most of these ladies were cast out of their homes, abandoned by either families or their husbands, and found prostitution as their only resort to sustain themselves. If they hadn't been abandoned by their families, then the young women were working in prostitution in order to support their families. Poverty was a big played factor in why the soiled doves did what they did. And lastly, if none of these reasons applied to a soiled dove, they were domestics or servants that were tricked into prostitution because they had been seduced by their masters. However, all soiled doves had one thing in common. They were misled young women that saw their bodies as a way to get the money they needed and the attention that they so longed for. There was research conducted in the 1800s that went on to show a pattern from the soil doves, something that they all had in common, and that was that they were all young, dumb, were poor, and came from broken families. These younger women kept getting pulled in because they saw how much money the other girls were making. Once they opened their eyes to the business, they realized that it wasn't as bad as they had perceived it to be, so they went ahead and joined in. Although prostitution was very frowned upon by other women that weren't in the business, it was a very important industry in the West and continued to be that way for a substantial amount of years.